I have a full time job, and when I come back home, I just don't have the energy to do like to work on my own personal portfolio, for example. So I just want to know how I can stay motivated and self disciplined. Now, when you say something like that, say self motivated. Well, who wants this? Do you want this thing? Uh, yeah, I do. Well, do you really want it? <laughs> <laughs> because why do I have to tell you that you want something? Like, aren't you motivated to achieve what it is that you want? Well, I guess, you know, the doubt creeps in and uh, you start to, uh, you know, you don't have the, con like, I don't have the confidence sometimes. I think uh, what I'm doing is in 3D. Uh, I'm, not, I'm not the best designer. Maybe what I'm doing isn't going to be the best. How can you stay self-motivated and disciplined? What that says to me is that you're not motivated and you're not disciplined, which is a different question altogether than I'm not sure what I'm doing is worth anything. That's an issue of self-confidence and self-worth. What's the question you really want to have the answer for? Or both? I, th I think it's just one is the cause for the other. Like maybe I have some, like maybe I'm, I have some self-doubt, which is why I'm not really motivated. What are you doing in your free time? Uh, just maybe watch uh, movies, play some games, just work on some stuff nothing 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 specific okay just lay down in bed <laughs> mm -hmm. and then you have weekends are you working on the weekends uh no weekends are usually for just like family and what like free time i think if anybody can understand this <laughs> it would be my good friend aaron zakelly yeah i feel like i totally understand what you're saying sharif where you get home and you don't really have the motivation to work on your own projects because it kind of sounded like what you're saying is like, it's going to suck anyway, so what's the point? Like, I'm not that good. Or, I mean, I don't have the energy. Is, is, should I really even be doing this? Yeah. You know, when I could just relax and then get back at it the next day at work. Yeah, so I get, that, I, I think that's what Sharif is saying, right, Sharif? More or less. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think yeah, you captured that sentiment yeah, yeah. correctly. <laughs> Somehow I knew you could identify it with this. So, Aaron, I have a question for you before I kind of chime in on this. Yeah, which is, shoot. How have you been able to find motivation to not just go home, drink a couple of beers, and go surfing and hang out? That's a good question, man. I feel like, honestly, I, I really appreciate Mr. Chris Doe because I have his voice in my head now. Like, he's, he's just brainwashed me into, like, he's brainwashed me into, like, if I'm sitting at home watching TV, I'm like, this isn't making me happy right now. I should be working on something, planning my next video. And it's okay if it sucks because that's not what it's about. It's about just working on something that you want to do and just... If you know you're working on things, for me at least, if I know I'm working on things, like writing a new script or a video that's just for me, I feel like that's, I'm getting better and that makes me feel good that I'm moving forward. While if I just sit there and watch TV and relax, I'm like, I'm not doing anything, I'm just wasting my time and I just feel bad. So I just follow kind of like, if I feel productive, that's the goal, just to feel productive at all times, then I feel good. Okay, so you've made that switch then, right? Yeah. And you're focusing on something that I think this is really important for me to point out to you guys, which is Aaron isn't judging himself on whether or not the video or the thing that he's going to make is good or not. He's just enjoying the process and he knows that for growth to happen, he just needs to take a step forward. Right. And if you learn to love that, then that's going to be okay. So I think too many of us hold the end result as the ultimate goal. And Jim Rohn said this, I, I believe it's Jim Rohn. He's like, it's important for you to have big, important goals. And it's less important for you to achieve those goals, but the person you become in the pursuit of achieving those goals. So that's the wonderful part is you can have a clear goal. And if you work towards that, you the side benefit is you become a better person in all aspects. You become more informed, you become more confident, you get greater practice, all those kinds of things. Mark, is there anything you wanna to add to this? Um, I think what has worked for me is really combining my free time with doing stuff I like. And I mean, you've talked about this when um, you know, you're combining the stuff that deals with work and then that kind of blends over and you're kind of yep. blurring lines into what is, you know, hobby and work. Right. So for me, I love shooting video. I love to edit. But when I combine my passions like traveling or, um, you know, I like to attend, you know, like friends events, you know, I'll shoot those events. Um, you know, just because I like doing it. So blending lines between work and play um, really helps to kind of move forward with being motivated. Mm. Also very good advice there. Okay, so Sharif, I'm gonna rein in some some, okay. some knowledge okay. on you right now. So, so here we go. You ready for this? <laughs> Dropping right. the knowledge. Now, 
everybody wants things they don't have. You want a faster car. You want a more beautiful mate. You want a bigger house. You want a, a faster computer. You want all these things. You want to achieve. You want more money in your bank account. You want that career. You want the promotion. Everybody wants that. That separates you from nobody because everybody wants that. But here's the thing. In order to get what you want, you have to be willing to ask yourself, what am I willing to give up? Because we all have the same amount of time, 24 hours in a day. We have seven days a week to get what it is that we want in life. So what you've told me is that you prioritize having fun, spending time playing video games and watching movies and doing family things and and maintaining your relationship with your girlfriend, I think, over self-improvement. So right now, you focused on, and we're gonna get into this because somebody else had the same question as you, you're focusing on a short-term reward, which is, it's pleasurable just to hang out and watch films, right? It's pleasurable to like kick it with your family or your friends and go out to a club or a bar, whatever it is that you do with your free time. And that's what everybody is going to get distracted by. But for me, it's always about the long-term thing. Like, where do I wanna be? And my dad explained this to me when I was a kid, and. I didn't think I was paying attention at that time, but I guess I was paying attention. What he told me is that life is long and the amount of time in which you have to achieve something is short. And what you realize is if you work hard now, the rest of your life, you get to reap the rewards of what you've planted. Whereas if you spread out the work over the rest of your life, you're gonna wake up one day, 20, 30 years from now and realize the first of all that you're 53 which is still pretty cool and you've not moved very far from where you started that those goals that you once held the one the things that you promised yourself that you're going to achieve in your life all of a sudden now becomes like this distant memory and you, you're going to probably be a little bit disappointed in yourself in 30 years if you didn't work towards it if you didn't give yourself the best shot So in order for you to get what you want, you have to first of all really want that more than having fun, more than chilling and playing. And that you have to give up lots of things. I'm gonna give you an example. Okay, I I do like to try to maintain my physique and exercise. I do like to read. I wanna spend time with my family. I wanna spend time with my kid or my children. But I also want this other thing. I want to create this impact on a global scale. I want to impact the lives of a billion people on earth. So I have to give up some things. I have to give up a little bit of that time that I had saved just for myself because I want that more. So for the benefit of you guys, I'm going to give up on my dream of getting a six pack (laughs) because the time in the gym is important to me, but it's not as important to me as impacting the lives of people that are tuning in to watch this program. So I have to give something up. So that's the trade. And I can't help you to become more self-motivated because only you can be self-motivated there, okay? So I think we have some tools to, to, to think about or some ideas. The first one is to enjoy the process, to know that growth is your ultimate reward, not the destination, okay? That's not as important to you. The journey is, okay? The other thing that you need to think about is perhaps you can do what Mark suggested, which is the, to blend certain parts of your life together so it doesn't feel like discrete things that you're doing. You're not going to segment or segregate your activities. So it's not like you're going to look at, well, now I'm going to read a book on strategy and that's work to me. Mm-hmm. You should strive towards blending all the things that you're interested in into like a cohesive thing so that it doesn't feel like you're doing different activities. And lastly, this is just the wake up call. And I guess it's cool because you're only 23. Aaron's what, 27, 28? 29 as of a few days oh, ago. Dang. <laughs> yeah. Oh, You're approaching the big 3 yeah, 0, Aaron. Dude. Yeah, yeah so that's why he's getting serious, right? So here's the thing Aaron's going to turn 30 in a year. And right. he's going to be sitting there thinking, what have I accomplished with my life? How much closer am I to achieving my goals? So he's come to the realization through the crystal brainwashing. I just don't even like that term. <laughs> Why is it called brainwashing? No, edit- dude, but I love it, man. It's freaking great. No, no, I want to say thank it. you, dude, to this fine. brainwashing, man. <laughs> it's great. You could use different words than brainwashing because that has such a negative connotation. But well, that's what okay. word should I use that's better? I've been inspired. I've it's been free. enlightened. Inspired. Positive I've been shown influence. a much better way of life. As a positive influence and impact on my life, Chris has helped me. That's all right. Brainwash is just fine. That's the term my wife uses all the time on me. So that's totally okay. But if you think about this, Aaron, 
and, uh, and Sharif and everybody else that's watching this. I made a lot of sacrifices when I was in college. I decided I'm going to give up going out, hanging out with friends and just playing video games or doing or reading comic books, whatever it is I loved at that time. I decided to trade that time for time in the library, time in the computer lab, time working on my projects, and that's what I traded. So when I graduated from school at 21 or 22, whenever I graduated, I was able to jump into my career and launch my business while other people were still figuring out their life. Uh, so I already established Blind as a company by the time I was 22. I've already hit $2 million of billings in the first two years. I sacrifice a lot. That's why I'm here in front of you. And if you guys want that, you have to be willing, in my opinion, to give up some of the things that you like. I, I wanted to, things that you want. to clarify ahead. your point, Chris. I wanted to ask you, I guess, and Sharif a question. Like, Or let me just ask Sharif. Like, when you're like at home after work and you sit down and you're watching the same movie you've probably already seen, like, are you happy? Like, Do you feel good doing that? No, I'm probably just doing it because it's easier to do than do other things. Like, I need to, what, uh, what, what's, a, what's the word, like, unwind or some, some brain dead activity that I'll just do because I'm, I, I can't just come, start working on a, a spec project for my portfolio because that requires a lot of thinking. I am just tired, you know? You're just tired, yeah. Yeah, we, we need our yeah. free time still. Do we? Yeah, I mean, like, that's I, I feel like yeah. I need some unwind time. I can't always be doing what's considered work, but I do need to, you know, have time where I'm just okay. not really actively thinking. Let's about Let's talk something. about this a little bit. This is perfect. Stay on you guys for a second because I want your reaction when I say this. All right, perhaps Sharif has a job that's unfulfilling. He's just doing it to make money, and that's sad to me because I think everybody should be pursuing a life and a career that's rewarding to them emotionally and financially. Okay, so first sign is perhaps he's not doing something that means anything to him. So here's the thing. Here's the big difference, right? I come home now. I'm, I don't necessarily have to unwind because I love my life and my career is in alignment with the things that make me really happy. So do you guys go home? The two of you go home like, oh, that was another long day at the future. I got to do anything I wanted. I'm self-motivated, self-directed, but gosh darn it, I have to unwind. Is that how you guys feel? Well, not not as dramatic as that, but <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I want to sit home and like, yeah, sometimes I want to just watch a movie and you have know, a beer. Yeah. But yeah. I would say that I would, I like to do that too. I would get home. My, my brain's tired from thinking and I'm tired. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but, but I'm sorry to make you think so here. much during the day. <laughs> but then I, if I sit down and watch TV, I'm like, I don't, I don't want to do that. I'm just like, dude, I hate this. I'm just sitting here watching okay. TV that I've seen before. And like, none of these shows are really that good. And like, I feel bummed, you know, like my yeah. life's going nowhere right now. So then I'm like, you know what? I'm going to get on my computer and edit one of my old, some old footage I have. And then that'll lead me into like trying to explore how to do some new thing in Premiere. And then I start watching YouTube videos and then I learn a couple things. And then I feel good doing that. I'm like, yes, I'm moving forward you here. Good something. job, Aaron. Yeah. Like, so when you compare that to sitting down and just watching the same movie you've seen a million times, like, I just follow, like, my inside is like, dude, this is a waste, dude. You're wasting your time right now. Like, and I can't even enjoy my time, my relaxation time. Cause it's, <laughs> you know? Yes, you're I can relate to that. I can relate to that. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. Like, you gotta, yeah, that's it. I'm who, done. Who else is talking over there? Spencer over here. Spencer, what's up? Yeah, so I um I'm in I'm enrolled in psychology at my uh, community college, and one thing I've learned and kind of applied that's helped me through all this because uh, I I've struggled with the same things over years. Um, yeah, at the right old age, <laughs> 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 he's still going through puberty. One thing I've he's like, with is, uh, this, it's the same thing, um, but one thing that really helps me is just um, having the, the self discipline to even if you don't want to do it just even start it like just dip your toes or even skim the surface of what you what it is you're trying to do um for example if i don't feel like reading but i have to read something for homework or for elsewhere um if you just even read three pages like if you even just tell yourself to commit to just reading three pages oftentimes just getting started it makes you realize how much easier it is to keep going yeah that's head, true mental idea of how hard it is like oh i have to sit down and i have to open the book and it's like everything seems like so like you know insurmountable is just this huge hill of like 
stuff. But then even if you just start, and even if you're mindlessly doing it, even if you're just flipping pages and skimming words, just the act of doing it kind of gets you in the mindset of That's it. That's good advice. Um, and you know what I mean? Helps you to just keep going. Yeah. yeah I'm glad point. you've been thinking about this for years. <laughs> and you've, you've come up with a solution. <laughs> okay, let's understand something here. I, I was reading an article, um, I think it was like Men's Fitness or something like that with Terry Crews. He's a, a former athlete and now a action star, actor kind of thing. And he's also on a lot of TV shows. He's super buff, big black, strong black man. <clears throat> and, and the article inevitably asks him, do you love to work out because you're super fit? He goes, no, hell no, I don't like working out. I hate working out. And that's the funny thing is, with the exception of maybe The Rock, most people hate working out. But what they love are they love the results. They love what happens when you put in the work. And he says, look, it's just a series of small commitments that he makes. So first he gets dressed and then he's like, I got nowhere to go. So what I'm going to do with this. So then he drives to the gym and he's in the parking lot. He's like, now what I'm going to do? I'm in the gym in the parking lot. I might as well go and say, okay, I'm just going to commit to doing arms today. And then three hours later, he comes out just yoked and just buffed <laughs> right. because he makes those small commitments. And sometimes it, it can play in your mind that it seems insurmountable. These tasks are so difficult, mm -hmm. so difficult. But I've learned to embrace the difficult. I've loved to embrace the grind and to make myself into the ultimate learning machine. That gives me great pleasure in my life. Now, I don't want to pretend and tell you guys, I go home and like, I'm on the computer or I'm reading books or I'm watching videos instantly. No, there's a little process. I do need to take some time for me. And so usually, typically, I come home, I eat dinner, I turn on CN or something like that, and then I'm reading messages, but I'm multitasking the whole time. And what happens is I build up this reservoir of energy and angst where I'm like, that's it, I'm done. I got to get on the box. I want to read that book. Just kind of like Aaron. Yeah. He has a kind of a, you stupid, you know, you get to get something productive done with your life. My whole thing is like, man, when I read this message, I have an idea. I make a note. Or I'm, I'm going to jump on that website or I'm looking at this and I'm watching this TV commercial and I think that's a cool commercial. What can I do? What can I learn from that? I'm going to go make something right now. So I build up that kind of energy. I stop that. I head up to my office at home and then I start the second shift and I just keep going until I feel like I'm tired and I go to sleep. And that's what I do every right. single day. Well, so it sounds to me like there's a difference between actively trying to do something and then passively. So, you know, if you're watching CNN and you say, you know, you hear an article that sparks an idea, then yep. that's like a passive learning experience. Um, maybe we're just kind of talking about two sides of, you know, active versus passive. And when it's active, that feels like it's work. But I feel like when I'm watching a movie, yeah, I'm constantly thinking about stuff. Maybe the, it's not the right term to say that I'm, you know, totally checking out and, um, you know, trying to get an escape from the day of work. Right. Well, see, here's the thing is that I'm motivated because of a higher purpose. I know what my purpose is. I'm not just watching TV to watch TV. I'm watching TV to study how Anderson Cooper talks about the news or watching the lower third graphics or watching the interstitials or the commercials that happen. I'm paying attention to this kind of stuff because I'm trying to solve another problem in my subconscious. So Mark, if you're watching a film and you're sitting there thinking to yourself, well, the lighting was quite remarkable, or I wonder why they casted that person versus this other person, or how did they resolve this conflict in the story? And here's the special part, the, the most important part to all this is, you have to go do something with this. You can't just be like, oh, I thought about it. Mm -hmm. So when you're done, if you went home and you jumped on Facebook, and you started writing an article on three plot holes that need to be filled in Iron Man 15, and you wrote about that, or here's my critique of the latest XYZ film. So you turn those thoughts into something. And I'm gonna end it on this. Jim Rohn said this, wealth is your ability to convert knowledge and experience into equity and capital. The convert part is the key word. If you watch something, if you experience something, like you eat a delicious meal, but you don't do anything with it, you've not created any wealth for yourself. But if you sat down, you started writing this incredible review, you took pictures of the food that you ate, and then people started to come to know you for writing these really in-depth and truthful ways of describing a food or eating experience, then you become Zagats. You become one of these other things where people look at you as an authority or an expert at something. So the key word here is to convert, okay? So Aaron's experience would be seen by him in a very judgmental voice as a waste of time. However, if he converts that in the next video, or he, he makes a note, or he sketches a frame, like he pauses the, the DVR and he says, wait a minute, that's a really excellent frame. Because when I'm watching, say, Westworld, 
I noticed the lighting and then I screen captured that and I sent it to Aaron. It's like, Aaron, I want to try this warm, cool light. I'm going to convert that into something and that's the key. All right, we're going to move on now, okay? Sharif, if you're not motivated, I can't help you. What you have to do is you have to find a higher purpose. You want to blend your activities together and you have to find that energy within yourself. Whether you practice active or passive learning, that's up to you, but you have to convert. 